It's stunning to me, too, is the lack of transparency of this hospital. And I mean, I'm not here to bash the hospital, but, you know, I'm you, you all are putting your lives on the line and, and you're putting your lives on the line. And there are other hospitals out there that are desperate for information because other hospitals could make these same mistakes and need to learn from what happened here. And this Absolutely. hospital has just been silent. They have been silent until you really come forward. And I mean, that's why I think what you're doing is so brave. This, this hospital has remained silent in the face of, of all of this. They've said virtually nothing about what has occurred inside there, about the real mistakes they made. They've apologized generally, but they haven't gotten specific, and the specifics matter to help other hospitals out there. And, and ultimately, I agree with every word you said, and, and that's, that's why I'm here. I am so tired of hearing their explanations that don't mean anything to anyone. I'm tired of them blaming the nurses for being sick. I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it, and I'm not taking it. Those nurses are heroes, and I, can, I refuse to continue to hear them, uh, you know, in any other light, and I'm not going to. Let, let me ask you about the medical waste, because that's obviously a huge, huge issue as well. What, was there, I mean, there's obviously a lot of medical waste in, in a case dealing with an Ebola patient. How was that handled? Well, there was no clear way that it was going to be handled. Um, I believe that, I mean, I wasn't, I never called a, a sanitation crew. I just told my charge nurse, I told my supervisor, I told the CDC, I told the infectious disease, you know, I said, excuse me, I said, um, we need our garbage picked up. You know, we are generating a crazy a, a amount of garbage. I mean, just with the amount of gear we're wearing, and every time you have to go in a room, you have to put it all on, and you have to take it all off and do it again. And you spend essentially all day getting dressed and undressed. Um, and we were wearing disposable scrubs, paper scrubs, some type of product, um, and, and a crazy, a, a massive amount of garbage and waste, some of it directly from the patient's rooms. Um, and it was just piling up. When I came in on Saturday morning, the 11th, um, the room that was designated as the garbage room was already, it was already chucked full. I mean, it, they ran out of room and they were just throwing bags in there. And so then it started, um, it started being put in the hallway. And um, when I came in there the on Sunday, yeah, a, 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 a hallway of, that's inside of the isolation unit. So it's not like a hallway that any Joe Schmo could be walking down. It's nurses, you know, it's a, it was a locked down unit. Um, but the CDC and the infectious disease people were walking up and down that hallway without anything on. They had no gloves on. They had no foot covers. They had no PP on whatsoever. And they were walking right near and, and touching stuff all up and down that hallway and then going into areas that were designated to be clean. And, and that's why I call that scene just an uncontrolled, unsystematic, chaotic, you know, it, ridiculous setup. Bob, is there, are, are there whistleblower protections for Brianna? There are some, but the whistle protection blower laws in Texas are not that strong. Um, that's why what I would really like to do, be able to avoid any kind of litigation or any lawsuit. I'm, I, I am, if I could, making a public request to Jim Berg, who's the president of the hospital, to contact you, Anderson, go on record and say, look, we recognize that this nurse is a hero and, and her job is in no way in jeopardy as a result of what happened. Uh, we don't want to go into litigation. We'll, we'll, we'll she, reach out to them. She's not in this for the money. She just wants to know that her job is secure and she can continue to be a nurse and provide for her family. If, God forbid, you tested positive and obviously you're monitoring yourself now, would you go to this hospital to be treated? I don't know if I can legally but I would try. I, I would I would do anything and everything not to be a patient there. And, and it, I told this to someone else, and it's not because I feel that a facility, another facility would do a better job. I have a wonderful job. I have a wonderful hospital. It's because of what I saw there and what I actually know to be going wrong in there. And I, and I just, I would be sitting there feeling like I could be contaminated any minute. If I didn't already have Ebola, that I may get it by being there, by having Doc, uh, a doctor cross-contaminate between patients by having an incompetent infectious disease infection control department, uh, by having incompetent CDC leadership there. Absolutely. They promise. They promise to be transparent, and they promise to put their employees' safety as their number one priority. 
and I feel lied to, and I know so many other people that do as well. Well, Brianne, I appreciate your strength and your courage in coming forward. We'll continue to push on the hospital to get a response for you about your job. Bob, as well, thank you so much. Thanks thank for your you. time. Thank you, Anderson.